Hey YouTube, wanted to make another video on another Casio I acquired. So this is kind of a follow-up on my previous review of my um, kind of my original ProTrack that I got, which was the PRW 3510Y. Um, love that watch, everything about it except for its size. That one had a you know I'm a lefty, so where my watch in my right hand. And the 3510 had a pretty, it was a little bit larger, and it had a kind of more of a, I guess a larger sensor. It kind of protruded more than this one does. And when you wear it, it would really kind of hit my wrist pretty hard, and it kind of made it uncomfortable. And as much as I loved it, and I had a great deal on it, um, you know, I was kind of on the fence of returning it. And then this one popped up on sale. So I'm like, well, I took that as another sign. So returned the other one, and I picked up this little guy, which is a little bit smaller. This is the PRG270, and they pretty much, um, I guess what I, what I, the only thing I kind of figured out that I don't have on this one compared to the other one was multiband, which I could I really don't care about that much to be honest. Like on my previous one, I had it; it never worked inside. You like. So unless I was wearing it outside, then you may have to go in there and deal with, you know, I just didn't quite see a benefit in it. And these keep, and it's not like, an, this is a mechanical watch that loses, you know, 10 seconds a day or 30 seconds a day or something like that. These are pretty well, uh, pretty good timekeepers already. So, you know, once every six months or once a year, maybe you can just manually adjust it if you need to. But otherwise it has, you know, the ABC sensors, it's solar, which is the main thing I wanted. And it does not have the rotating bezel. So my other one had the rotating bezel. And I believe that's used with some more kind of advanced um, navigation features, which to be honest, I didn't know how to use. I looked at it at the manual and I, you know, I could have taken time to learn it, but I think like most things, if you don't use it, you'll probably forget it. So not a big deal. So uh, switching to this one was kind of an easy decision. This one again popped up on sale. Not as good of a deal as the other one. Uh, this one I believe I paid like eighty dollars for. It was seventy nine ninety nine on an Amazon sale. So, you know, not, I think that normally they're like one hundred twenty. So it wasn't that big of a discount like my other one. But this one is was noticeably more comfortable. It was, it's a little bit smaller. Doesn't have that large sensor. Um, so overall, it fit better. And quite frankly. Um, I kind of thought this would be the watch for me, but there's always a but. So, you know, I've had this now for maybe, I don't know, two weeks. I've worn it a couple of times. It feels good. It's comfortable. But now the the one that caught my eye is the Garmin Solar Instinct. So that one just came up on sale for a really good price. I believe, I think it's still there for anyone that wants it. Kohl's has it for $2.99. You know, with like the Kohl's cash and all the other stuff, you get like another $75 back in Kohl's cash, which we'll use probably be for a Christmas shop anyway. So really, it was like $230 to get the um, Garmin Solar Instinct, which is pretty comparable to to like the Casio's. It's solar powered. It's got all the ABC functions, but it's obviously got a whole lot of other tools and features that this one does not have. So for, you know, which I use, by the way, because I do wear Garmin fitness watches often. So for me, it was like a way to combine like a, you know, like something like a pro track with like my fitness watch and be able to have both on at the same time. So that's kind of, so unfortunately, I'm kind of torn if I want to keep this one or send this one back. Um, I don't know, I'm still kind of thinking, but overall, I prefer, uh, I much prefer this one over the 35 uh, 10 that I had previously just due to the size now if I wore it on my left hand then the 35 uh, 10 I probably keep because I love the other one the look of the other one better it was more kind of had that military vibe it was you know I had the negative display kind of the OD green color segue um, but even though I had no issues with the display visibility of the 35 10 um, this one is easier to see. Um, so not that the other one was harder, it's just this one is easier. So for example, I'm wearing a G-Shock right now that has a negative display and you can kind of see that at the right angle, it's super visible, but sometimes it's not. 
um, where this one, you know, I feel like is always visible. So this kind of this display is more visible than that um, than a 35 times negative display. But again, I had no issues, so that wouldn't be a deciding factor for me. Otherwise, it shares pretty much a lot of the same features. They work the same way. You know, you navigate the same way. These kind of share kind of that same button layout. You have your compass, um, barometer, you can see compass. So I know for a fact that that's west. So we can kind of test it right now. And yeah, so you can see. So yeah, well, I believe west is somewhere in that direction. So yeah, so that works. Um, barometer, um, you know, I, I don't really have much of a need for this, other, other than, you know, they say if you see it drop and it's like a prediction of a storm, but I don't know. I got, I think yesterday dropped and there was no storm, so I don't know. Um, alt altimeter, eh, I mean, for me, again, I'm not, I like I like having it, but I just not, haven't had a chance to really need it or use it yet, so for me, I like the compass feature the most. Um, and it's got your typical modes here. So this is the time. This is your sunrise, sunset. You know, so it's saying sun sunrise. Uh, today was at 5:30. Sunset will be. At, I'm sorry, other way around. Sunrise was at, was at 7:45 a.m. The sun sunset, sunset will be at 5:30 p.m. Um, and same thing as my previous one. You can actually change the date. So that's for today. If I want to see what tomorrow's will be. You can just see. So there we go. 11.18. So tomorrow sunrise uh, will be at 7.47 and sunset will be at 5.29. So you can kind of look ahead too. This is what we got here. Receive. You know, this one I'm not quite sure. I know it has something to do with the altimeter. Um, I haven't had a chance to really, I've read it on my previous watch, um, but don't really understand what that one does. And your typical stopwatch, timer, alarm, and world time. So I keep it to UTC, so you get the UTC time and then you got your local time here. So again, as I said in a previous video, these are pretty intuitive. Like, you know, I, never, I haven't even opened this book yet. Same with the 3510, I never, I figured it all out just by playing with it. The only time, the only reason I went into the book was to kind of figure out some of the more advanced features, like how to use like the the rotating bezel with kind of navigation. It kind of gives you instructions how to use it, but um, it's kind of a little over, over my head. Um, we got the battery indicator right here at the bottom, so you can see it's on medium. So you know, overall, you know, this, you know, had I not kind of switched to the Garmin Instincts, I'd say this would have been my favorite Pro Track because it's kind of a comfortable version because a lot of these Pro Tracks are just too darn big. Um, so I appreciated this one being a little smaller and of course the sensor being a little more kind of recessed. But you know, if you've kind of re reviewed one, you've reviewed them all. So there isn't a whole lot more I can say about this one that I didn't say about the 3510. Now they're pretty much the same kind of watch, just, you know, different cosmetics and exterior shells and colors and a few extra features. So the biggest thing is if you really like the multiband, you know, that this one will not have it. But again, I don't see a purpose to it, to be honest. Um, in my previous one, it would never catch it inside. I tried numerous times. It would always fail inside, so you have to go outside to do it. But then, you know, what's the point of doing it? If you if I have to go outside every time to do it, then it kind of, in a way, I don't know, defeats the purpose a little bit for me. And with this being pretty accurate, I just don't see a purpose to it. So if multiband is um, important to you, then this one obviously will disappoint. Then I'd go with the 3510 if you want the multiband. But otherwise, this, this will kind of give you everything you need. And the one thing I like about Protrax, and I wish the G-Shocks would have it or fix it, is the one thing I don't like about like the G-Shocks is these buttons are just a pain to press. I mean, I mean you kind of have to, you know, really kind of push hard and just you kind of have to try to push it. Where these are just, you know, obviously they're bigger and they're just much easier to press. So I mean, this takes no effort to cycle through, you know. 
Oops, what did I, what did I get myself into? But yeah, that's the one thing I wish the G-Shock would do is to kind of make these buttons a little bit more accessible. I don't know if they're worried about accidental presses, but I, I'd rather have a few accidental presses and try and like really struggle to get this to work. So yeah, you know, I don't want to kind of drag this out any more than it has to be. There really isn't much more to say about this one other than it is a great watch, especially if you can get it for $80. It's, a, I think, a steal. But I'm about 90, I don't know, 90, 95, 99% sure this is this guy's going to go back to Amazon just because now they got my Garmin Instinct coming in. I feel like that's going to be, I'm going to be wearing that one a whole lot more. And I just don't know a situation that I would, you know, grab this one over the Garmin because the Garmin essentially gives me everything this has plus more. Um, and the Garmin, I know for those who are wondering, the Garmin does have unlimited battery power if you put it in just um, battery saver. So the, I'll do a review on the Garmin Instinct when I get it. But it does have a uh, ability where you put it in power saver where it disables all the typical fitness sensors. So you just basically have just a watch. So, and then it'll charge up and in a way it could be your survival watch, which is kind of what I got this for is to be kind of my um, outdoor slash kind of, you know, my apocalyptic watch. So I don't know. I'm on the fence. We'll see. Um, I think because of the holidays, Amazon's return policy has been extended. So I'll see if maybe what Black Friday has to offer. You know, I'll keep thinking what I want to do with this one. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. And actually, I know normally you, you do this in the beginning, but let me just do a couple of quick numbers here for you guys so weight on this guy you're looking at 69 grams and compare that with a g-shock square let's see what this one comes in at so that one we're at 52 and some external dimensions on it let's take a look here and grab my uh, calipers Okay, let's zero it out. So if we go kind of at the th at the largest part, which would be across the sensor, we are looking at roughly 52 millimeters, kind of at the at its biggest part. If I go kind of or on a diagonal, we're looking at about 50, 51, 50 and a half thickness it's pretty it's a relatively thin feeling watch so about 13 and a half kind of at the bezel looks like let me try to see if i can get a better see this you know the battery kind of protrudes a little bit but i can't quite get across the whole thing so yeah i'd say but it's about 13 Maybe call it 14 millimeters thickness. Uh, lug to lug, we are looking at fifty-one and a half from lug to lug, and then lug width on this guy. Let's see if I can get in there. The one thing I also wish Cassio would do is to kind of I don't know, I don't know if it's possible or acceptable, but you know, I always like to try on new straps and they kind of have this, I want to say proprietary, but you know, if you, you put another strap on there, it doesn't look good. I, like for example, I'd love to put this on a NATO band. So I know they sell adapters, but even those kind of look a little goofy. So you're looking at about 18 millimeter um, uh, bandwidth in case you want to switch out. Um, let's here we'll do a quick on the wrist so I've got about a seven seven inch wrist so you can kind of see you know, how that how that fits and it is it's, it's a really comfortable watch I mean it's so light and see I don't have as much of a problem with this one as I did with the other one with the sensor I mean it doesn't that one the other sensor just really kind of bothered me all right thanks for watching have a good one